Wow. Hey, hi, everyone. Welcome back to She Boy's Podcast. Today's guest is Nat- Natalie Thomas. Hi, Natalie. Hey, Brooke. Thank you so much for having me on your show. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on my show. So can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, let me take you back when I started to build my uh, my business. I uh, I was I wanted to become a professional speaker, but oh. I had this voice in my head telling me, <laughs> "What? You're not good enough. You can't do that. You don't even speak English. You want to write books in English? You, you speak <laughs> French. Like what? What are you dreaming? This this is never gonna happen." So I had this voice in my head telling me that I was not good enough and I, that it would never work. And that's when I realized. I need to stop this. I need to stop that voice inside my head and I need to figure out how to reprogram it and change it. So that's when I decided to study neuroscience. So I spent the last decade creating a system to change that negative. Like we trash talk ourselves all the time, but we don't talk to people like that. Like you're not going to say to your friends, oh, you look fat in these jeans. Oh, you're starting your own business. It's never going to work. You're not good enough. But we trash talk ourselves all the time. It's ridiculous. So that's why, that's why I spent the last decade Studying neuroscience, I created the system, and that's the system I share in my eight international number one best selling books and the base of all my online courses. Yeah, nice. so you have online courses to help people get that negative mindset out of their head. I'm yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Right, right before this interview, I just had a negative thought like, I was like, I don't even want to interview today. Like, I feel so depressed and sad and stuff. And I was like, all sad before, before this. And I'm like, wow, I didn't, I did not know that's what neurosciences was. Wow. Well, there's lots of things. Neuroscience is really wide and vast. I did uh, look for, I, I wanted to specialize really in um, in the middle part. And when I say the middle part, I, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll talk to you about the three different steps of my system. And most people know the first step. No, pe- most people do that. Most people know the third step and they try to do that. So the first, I'll give you the example of a kitchen renovation. Let's say that you're renovating your kitchen. So the first step is you're going to make a folder and you'll put samples of these cupboards. You want to have this backsplash. You want to have this countertop. You want to have Uh, this hardwood floor, paint chip, and you'll put all these samples in your folder so that you will make a plan of what it is that you want. So a lot of people did that. And, And Brooke, you may have done a list or smart goals or a vision board, right? A lot of people do that, right? So the the thing is, it's important to do that. That is the first step of my DNA system as well um, in the Think Yourself system. So you need to know what you want. Perfect. But if vision boards alone worked, we would all live on a desert, deserted island, just sipping martini, driving Mercedes Benzes, right? <laughs> but, but, but it's not, it doesn't end there. Just a vision board is not a kitchen. Just a folder is not a kitchen. You cannot cook inside your folder. It's not a kitchen. <laughs> it's a folder full of samples, right? <laughs> uh, the, yeah. So a lot of people go straight to the third step and they try to implement good habits into their life they're trying to to do their meditation or or they find tricks and strategies and tips and and methods and and what's the newest latest greatest thing and latest course on this to teach me how to do that but this is important it's the third step but you kind of skip a step in the middle because you can't put your cupboards over top of the existing cupboard in your kitchen. You can't put the island over top of the existing island in your kitchen. You need step two. You have to gut out the old kitchen. You have to remove all the crap and all the old stuff you don't want anymore. You have to get rid of the negative self-talk, the limiting belief, anger, fear, hurt, sadness, guilt, trauma, all the bad habits and the bad stuff you don't want anymore. That's what I do. I mainly specialize in that second step to get rid of what you don't want anymore. And the system has all three parts. Mm-hmm. But the second part is the one that everybody forgets. And they're like, I don't understand why it doesn't work. I work really, really hard. You know, I get up at 5 a.m. and I accept clients till 5 p.m. And then I post on social media. I have a podcast. I do this. And then I write my books. And then I have a marketing strategist. And I, I do everything right. And they are exhausted. 
<laughs> and, and it's because they're carrying all this old baggage that they don't need to carry anymore and that's exhausting so get rid of that old crap <laughs> that's not necessary yes. you don't need this anymore <gasps> wow yes i agree <laughs> like how how do you do that like what is your method to help someone who is like having that negative thought like how do you mm -hmm. help them so let's talk a little bit about the brain. Um, the brain has many different parts. Um, I, like to, uh, I like to use different analogies, uh, like the analogy of the kitchen renovation. But let's pretend that you have a personal assistant in your head that yes. is listening to everything that you say or think. And your personal assistant is constantly there taking note. That personal assistant is your unconscious mind. And it is so powerful. So firstly, I can maybe tell you, before I talk about the unconscious mind, I can tell you about the logical mind. Your logical mind is that voice inside your head that's talking to you all the time. It can handle five to nine pieces of information at a time. That's cool. You can multitask, right? So nowadays you can do your grocery shopping while you are on a meeting on your phone, right? In your headset and keep your kids from falling off the cart. And at the same time, notice the guy in blue witnessing the lady in red in the seafood department. Like you can do all that at the same time, right? But have you ever noticed, Brooke, if let's say that you're driving to a new address mm -hmm. and beautiful day, windows are down, music is on. And as you get closer to that new address, you start looking at the numbers on the houses. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that you have to lower the volume on the radio? Oh, Isn't yeah. That weird? Isn't that weird? Right? <laughs> because five to nine pieces of information gets overwhelmed very quickly when you have the foot on the brake and the accelerator the red light ahead the kid that's about to cross the street the lady that maybe will cut you off and then the dude in the car next to you winking at you gross when you add looking at the numbers on the houses the music becomes the one too many so five to nine is not that great after all living at a logical level is exhausting you're always trying to get to the next place it is like let's say you are trying to build your business and you're going in one direction and then you go forward and you're like yeah i'm working on it i'm working on it and i want to get there i want to get there and then you it, it is like you are trying to go to los angeles but you are in an aircraft that's flying to new york city you can work as hard as you possibly can, but if you stay in that aircraft that's flying in the opposite direction, you're never going to get there. Yeah. So a lot of people come to me and they say, how do I get off that aircraft? And I say, no, stay on the aircraft, but talk to the pilot and say, hey, bud, do you mind turning around? Because that's where I'm going. Can you imagine how fast you're going to get there once the pilot is on board? That pilot is that personal assistant that I was telling you about. So that personal assistant is very powerful. It's your unconscious mind that can handle 2.3 million pieces of information every second. I'm going to say that again. It can handle 2.3 million pieces of information every second. Five to nine for the logical mind. 2.3 million for the unconscious mind. That's where the power is. So that personal assistant is right there taking notes and making you write about your thoughts. But the problem is people wake up in the morning, they look at themselves in the mirror and they go, I'm so tired. I'm so yes. stressed out. I think yes. I'm gaining weight. So then your personal assistant writes it down. Tired, stressed out, getting weight, tired. What can I do for this? Oh, I know. I'm gonna keep her awake all night. She's not gonna be able to sleep. She's gonna be really tired in the morning, check stressed out she wants to be stressed out hmm. oh i'm gonna make her delete a very important appointment in her calendar oh that's gonna be stressful check gaining weight that's an easy one i can certainly find a chocolate bar or something something deep fried for her to eat today check so your personal assistant is making you right so you have to be very careful what you tell your personal assistant because your personal assistant is just working on the list right there so if you keep saying, and my clients do this to me all the time, they tell me what they don't want. I don't want to be stressed anymore. I don't want to rush everywhere. I don't want to be impatient with my kids and I don't want to be broke. Mm -hmm. Stress, rush, impatient, broke, got this. Even if you say, I don't want to, 
because your brain doesn't process all these extra words. It just focuses on the main thing. So if you say, let's say, let's say you close your eyes for, for a second, everyone listening to this, close your eyes, except if you're driving. A lot of people <laughs> are to the podcast as they're driving. So if you're driving, keep your eyes open. Everybody else, close your eyes mm -hmm. and do not visualize a Mickey Mouse wearing a yellow tuxedo standing on top of a pink Mercedes Benz. Do not visualize Mickey Mouse wearing a yellow tuxedo standing on, the, on top of a pink Mercedes <laughs> Benz. You can reopen your eyes. Did you see it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I said, do not. I said, do not very clearly. But your brain has to process the whole information before it can negate it. So... Uh so we don't want to say what we don't like like if you hire a, a paint a painter to paint your kitchen and you say i would like you to paint my kitchen not blue huh mm -hmm. <laughs> what color do you want because all they heard is blue and then when it's time to paint the guys are going to say oh what color are we painting again uh oh yeah she said some, she said something about blue okay blue it is then and then they'll start <laughs> painting <laughs> you don't want to say what you don't want to so change that language and say what you want because your personal assistant is always going to try to make you write about it. And you know what's going to happen if if your brain is programmed and I'm going to use a very simple uh, example that a lot of a lot of people can relate to. Let's say you want to lose a few pounds, but you keep repeating to yourself every day. Oh, I'm so overweight. I hate exercise. Every time I lose weight, I gain it back. Oh, I'm going to gain weight at Christmas. Like all these things that we keep telling to ourselves, right? What's going to happen if one day you start exercising, you start losing weight, you start eating well, and you start liking good food? Your personal assistant's going to go in panic mode. Oh my <laughs> gosh, what's going on? She's losing weight. She's she's actually liking to exercise. She's supposed to hate it. Oh my gosh, she's supposed to be overweight. What can I do? Oh, I know I'm going to make her fall on the sidewalk. That's She's going to hurt herself. She's not going to be able to exercise anymore. And she's going to gain the weight back. <sighs> I've done my job. <laughs> right? So we have to be very careful what we tell our personal assistant. Because the personal assistant is very powerful and it's going to make you it, it, it's going to work to make you right <laughs> so you have to be very very careful <laughs> i did not think of it so what inspired you to study neuroscience well honestly um i remember when uh, <laughs> when i started to speak professionally um i needed a video done so we had three cameras so there was a big camera you know for the close-up there was a camera for the wide angle and then there was a camera behind me to see the large audience but the problem is there were only 20 people in the room <laughs> so, <laughs> so we kept asking them to move from one section to another so that when we would put the segments together it would look like there was a large audience right? <laughs> it was so bad it was so bad i remember my first paid speaking engagement i got a phone call from an organization who wanted me to train their sales force they asked for my rate brooke i didn't even have a corporate rate so i go <laughs> uh, 250 so they say okay so for four hours that would be a thousand i meant 250 for the whole thing right <laughs> so i go yeah. That's correct, one thousand dollars. So I hung up the phone and I got the contract. Wow! And oh, I got the contract. The truth is, I remember sitting in my office feeling like a fraud. Oh. I remember hearing my personal assistant telling me, "You're not a real professional speaker. You don't deserve a thousand dollar paycheck for an afternoon." See that that video I had made to make the audience look bigger than it was in my made up corporate rate. None of it was real. I was just trying to look more than I really was because I felt like just me was not enough. So that's when I decided I need to shut down this voice inside my head. And that's when I started to really pay attention to what was around me. I've read uh, hundreds of books uh, on, on different topics, all surrounded to uh, self-sabotage, negative self-talk, and, and ways to reprogram. I did a mas um, master practitioner course, well, two different uh, master practitioner courses in NLP, in your linguistic programming. Um, recently did another uh, trauma practice to disconnect emotional um, 
connection to trauma. So for PTSD, uh, it's called the RTM protocol. So that's uh, very, very useful for deep, deeper trauma. Uh, it's backed up by science as well. So I, I really like um, the, I really like how we all have a brain <laughs> and it's powerful and it's, and it's amazing. And I, I was just reading a book recently how about the, uh, the, the power of, of the brain for memory and, and all that. And I don't know if you knew that, but I didn't know, but there's <laughs> such a thing as Olympics for memory, like the, 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 the wisest people in the world kind of they compete and some people win these Olympics and they have the biggest memory in the world. Like they have like 200 pictures in front of them and they have to remember all the names and then they get 30 seconds to do that. And then they have to memorize a deck of card in wow. order that, that's all shuffled. They have to remember this, this deck of card in like a minute and then they can say the 52 cards in order. Like they, they have like amazing minds, right? Well, they did some testing on the brains of these people that win these games, okay? And you know what they found out? Their brain is average. Their brain is average. Because <laughs> just having a brain is enough to be able to do that. And you have one. And I have one. And we all have one. So just having a brain is perfectly plenty enough. It's good enough to be able to, to do these amazing olympic worthy things that they do so we can do our everyday life very well with with an average brain because the brain is just that powerful it's it's astonishing the power that we have so i get so excited <laughs> when i <laughs> talk about the brain i think we're going over time but i'm just <laughs> you're loving, good. Loving this topic. <laughs> no no you're good i like learning about this because i did not know my brain was like that like i was I was always wondering why do I have negative thoughts? Like who is telling my brain to have negative thoughts? And it's me. I didn't I didn't realize I was doing that. Wow. Yeah. Our personal assistant because it it programs us and well it's psychoneuroendoimmunology. So that's a long word, but it, what it means is that whenever you have a negative thought, it send it it sends it into your body so your body is starting to feel bad and it curls up and and it's just not feeling good so then your body sends a message to your brain and say hey bud we're feeling bad help us what can we do to feel even worse because it thinks that we want to feel like that so then the brain generates another thought that will make you feel bad and then because your body will feel bad, it will send a message to the brain and say, hey, we're feeling bad. OK, feeling bad. I got it. I will send you another thought to make you feel even worse. And then it's that cycle that starts. So we need to get out of the cycle. I'm going to give you a two step technique. Do we have time for the two step oh, technique? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay. I'm going to give you a two step technique to break that cycle. OK, so the first step is you have to repeat what you just heard in your head in the past with I used to, okay? So I don't know if you've, um, if you've heard of affirmations before, um, yeah. right? A lot of people do affirmations. Well, I'm sorry to tell you this, but affirmations don't work if you don't believe them. Because the problem is a lot of people, like my, my brand is Think Yourself, right? So if I work with any of the program, the Think Yourself Successful or the Think Yourself a Relationship Pro, the Think Yourself Thin, uh, the Think Yourself Wealthy. If I work with, let, let's say, the Think Yourself Thin program with somebody that is highly, highly overweight, it's not going to work to say, okay, stand in front of the mirror and say, I am thin. Or if I work in, with, with the Think Yourself Wealthy program, clients that are in deep financial struggle, okay? I'm not going to say, okay, put your hands on your hips and say, I am rich. Because the brains go, uh, no, we're not. So your personal assistant is like, I'm not listening to this. She must be watching a vampire movie. <laughs> Vampires don't exist. This is not for me. I'm not writing this down. <laughs> so these affirmations don't work because the brain's like, ah, nah, not at all. But if you use that two-step technique, it's a way to get a hold of your personal assistant and say, hey, I'm talking to you. So <laughs> let's say you hear yourself say, oh, I'm so stressed out. Then you catch yourself with the technique and you say, wait, I don't want my personal assistant to write that down. Uh, <laughs> I used to be stressed out all the time. So then your personal assistant is like, oh yeah, stressed out. I got that on my list right here. You're talking to me. Yes, what about it? I, you used to be stressed out. So are we done with this? 
talking about this in the past. So then that's time to follow up with the second step of that of that technique. So the second step is a progressive statement. A progressive statement starts with I am willing to learn or I'm in the process of. So oh gosh, I'm so stressed out. Wait, I used to be always stressed out. Now I'm in the process of building a balanced life for myself. Now I'm willing to learn how it feels to be calm. Or you hear yourself say because a lot of people had to move to virtual in the past year, right? And everybody mm-hmm. said at one point during the during the pandemic, I'm so bad with technology, right? <laughs> we all said that. So now we say, I used to think that I was bad with technology. Now I'm willing to learn how to use Zoom in order to lead my business. Or I'm willing, or I'm in the process of uh, learning more about technology. So it's very interesting how when you start using the two-step technique, how it completely transforms your life because it tells your personal assistant what you want, not what you don't want. And that, of course, this is a short-term technique um, in order to, to completely reprogram years and years of trash talk. That has to happen at a at an unconscious level. That's what I do. So there's there's specific protocols and techniques that I use with my clients in order to get rid of the of, of the the old stuff. But this will at least help you start the process on your own. So that's a good trick that you can use. And there's lots more strategies like that. I have um, a confidence guide for your audience, uh, Brooke, if they want to download it. So you you would go to thinkyourself.com slash confidence guide. And that will be, um, you you will be able to find the confidence guide there. So thinkyourself.com slash confidence guide. And then um, you will be able to get, so there's 15 different uh, keys into the full online course in the Think Yourself Confident. And uh, this gives you the list of, of all the keys with a, a lot of different questions you can ask yourself to put you on the right path um, to uh, start reprogramming these negative self-talk. Okay. That reminds me of, have you ever um, read the book, The Secret? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, that's that's what it reminds me of. And it did help me a little bit, but I went back into the negative thought and the negative thinking. I'm like, why am I thinking this way? But I'm definitely gonna take your steps and use them every day. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> because and I love the secret. It's an amazing book, and it's exactly what I was talking about about the first step. You need to know what you want and you need to say what you want, attract uh, positive in your life and make room for for abundance and all this it's the first step and then what right and uh, it doesn't stand there even if you look at your vision board every day and uh, like uh, yeah that, that's that like you need to gut out the old kitchen and then you need to install the new furniture in your kitchen and then the new floor and then paint the walls and and there's three steps to everything and the and the, the secret is definitely a really good first step. Okay. I'm definitely gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna read it again. <laughs> and I wanna thank you so much, Natalie, for coming on my show today and speaking about neuroscience. <laughs> thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> you have a great day. You too. Bye bye. Hey everyone i want to thank you all so much for listening to my podcast um if you would like to go to natalie's website i've linked it below and if you want to check out anything she has going on and what she offers on her website then you can go on her website i want to thank you all so much for listening to my podcast have a great day